Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of A A BJJ BJJ Marriage, Marriage, where we talk about our lives as a married jujitsu couple. The first time you did that to me, I was just like, what are you doing? (laughs) We're silent counting down. And I was like, but I don't understand. I don't get it. You didn't tell me. So you didn't say three, two, one. You just said three. And I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> but anyway. I was, I was expecting you to count down your head. Yeah, I thought you didn't we have tell me that. telekinesis. Active communication between married couples is Some key. Some kind of BJJ marriage you've got. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was a good intro. Welcome back to another episode of a BJJ marriage with your hosts, Nick and Brittany. Woo-hoo. Woo! And then oh. we've got some really special guests today, and I'm really excited about it. We have Trevor and Abby. Mm-hmm. Woo! <laughs> Cheers. Welcome, guys. Thanks for coming to the first episode in like two months. So, sorry. Guys. I think it's the first episode of 2023, yep. which is yeah. exciting. Sure hey. is. <laughs> and the first. Mm-hmm. Also, episode 80, <clears throat> which is kind of impressive. Even though we've missed like seven weeks in a row. So. You know, 80 episodes is a lot of episodes. Yep. That's like at least 80 hours of jujitsu mm-hmm. that you've heard us talk about. At least. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> if you listen to all episodes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. But yeah, so we have some guests from Fluid on today, and I'm really excited because they are also a BJJ marriage couple. Oh, Abby yes. just very recently started a few yes. months ago, so it's really cool to have you here. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having us. Abby and Trevor Schmidt, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't mess up the last name. <laughs> Despite Abby's attempts. But. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to start calling you yes. Mr. Schmish. Yeah. Schmish. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, Abby, how'd you get into jujitsu? <clears throat> Trevor. Yep. Trevor <laughs> got me here. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> Sounds about right. I mean, your brother does jujitsu too. Yeah, so my older family. brother, he started a few years ago, and he was like, oh, you know, you could... You could come and get your first class free, and if he had pushed more, I probably would have broken at some point, but I was like, meh, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but Trevor got me here. Mm-hmm. Where's awesome. your brother train? He trains at Neutral Ground in Grafton. Oh, oh cool. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So with, he's with uh, Perry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. <clears throat> Very nice. Uh, Trevor, what got you into uh, jiu-jitsu? Well, I got into also. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much for me. But um, I had a wrestling background, so I was already interested in jiu-jitsu just because I had that itch I wanted to scratch of grappling. Grappling. But really, the moment... Grappling outside of college or high school. Right. <laughs> and the moment that actually really did for me, so I enjoy casually watching the UFC, and I saw Michael Chiesa and Vicente Luque have a fight, and, and yep. it was one round basically all grappling, and I saw that, I was like... All right, guess I'm doing it now. <laughs> I'm interested. That looks fun. Yeah. I would like to do that. <laughs> so that uh, next week, I signed up in August of 2021. Wow. And here we are. And here we are. <laughs> That's super cool. That's now awesome. you got four stripes on your belt. I do. I do. Ooh, fancy. Mm-hmm. You're almost full. ready to match that gear. Yeah, right. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I keep, a full zebra. Right? I keep saying there's always time to get demoted. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you just happen? break money? You just rip off your own stripes. You're right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I got my four stripe on my white belt, I just went around saying I was a zebra for six months. <laughs> it was really nice. <laughs> I plan on doing that for my fourth. I'm on my blue and being like, I'm a blue zebra now. <laughs> that sounds really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Very Which, cool. Speaking of that, Nick and I actually did get our third stripes this oh. week, so that's super exciting. So we haven't given nice. life updates in seven weeks. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, so that was cool. That was very unexpected. And I'm scary. Someone came up to me and they're like, you're almost a purple belt. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are calling me almost a brown belt. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Let's just roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, that's what brown belts do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, very fun. I'm very excited to watch you guys progress. And I know Abby just got her first stripe very that's recently. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. A couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yes, congrats to her. Were you yeah. surprised? Yeah. <laughs> She's lying. <laughs> I w- no. Yes and no. I guess I wasn't really expecting to get it, and I was feeling like, nah, <laughs> I could stay no stripe forever. <laughs> I feel more comfortable that way. Uh huh. But it was a really good roll with Brenton. Um, yep. And I didn't really realize what I was doing at the moment. I just knew that. I don't know. I was in attack mode. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. so one thing led to the next, and it was three 
sorry submissions linked together and he was like wow that's so cool and, blah, blah, blah. and so then after he was saying all that i was like oh boy what have i done <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i felt the same thing when you got your stripe um we were rolling i think right before you got your stripe mm-hmm. and you had put me in some like legitimate submissions that yeah. i was like oh i had i can't just like do anything i mm-hmm. have to actually do jujitsu and defend with her yeah <laughs> And, uh, and then he said that, I was like, yep, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And the reason he was surprised is because typically no stripe white belts aren't near putting anything cohesive together in jiu-jitsu. It's more so like trying to move out of positions or not get submitted is what no stripe white belts normally do. I was trying to not get submitted. <laughs> that was the goal. <laughs> yes. But a great way to not get submitted is to submit people. Yeah. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, he told me, he was like, yeah, I wasn't really expecting to give Abby a stripe today, but, like, when I was rolling with her, she put me in a legitimate arm, but my arm hurts. Like, he told me, like, six hours later, like, my arm hurts. So, she needed a stripe. <laughs> Which sorry. is super cool. No, sorry, rent it. Hurting people. No, he deserves it. <laughs> he needs some white belts to beat him up sometimes. That's true. Yep. But Brittany likes to headbutt him. Oh, there you go. He sits there on his knees and she's like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. I'm a bull. That's what I like yeah. to say. But it's Tai Chi. Like he teaches that where if you like go right in the center of the chest, that's how they fall over. Because if she you push them on the shoulder. Head. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's a... of her hand. <laughs> <laughs> Any technique will do. Hand. All right. He's going to wrist lock me. I have actually tried that. I've worked on the Tai Chi in the middle, but then I get wrist locked. So now mm, I yes. use my head. Is that why get... he teaches that? Like, yeah, go ahead. Push yes. me with your hands. Yes, yes he yes. does. Because he wants to grab. <laughs> and now you know, so don't fall for it. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel with four stripes, Trevor? How do I feel? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like a blue belt almost? <sighs> I don't know. My mentality throughout jiu-jitsu has just been so all over the place. I came in, and I guess Brittany could allude to the fact, because she talked to me a couple months about it, of when I first started, I was much more <laughs> bullish, I think is pretty much the word she used. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And it was weird because it was the combination of knowing I would be bad, but wanting to at least like show, okay, I'm brand new, but I don't completely suck. And that was the mentality I came in with. So that led to that more bullish rolling. Yes. But I also developed the mentality of, okay, I'm going to roll as a former wrestler with the mentality that I'm not a total beginner. And so my mentality as a brand new person was just act like I'm a blue belt. And that was the (laughs) mentality I had. (laughs) So what does that yeah. look like exactly? <laughs> like, walk like an Egyptian. <laughs> right. I mean, evidently it translated to uh, being incredibly stiff and <laughs> very rugged in my motions. Yep. So it's been kind of full circle because then it got to the point because again, my goal as a brand new person, never with any jujitsu was I'm going to go to my blue belt in a year. And oh, that, sure. that was just instantly the mentality of like, all right, that's my goal. I need yeah. a goal for jujitsu. Yeah, something to keep you coming back to class, right? Right. As a starter, not knowing anything about jujitsu, yeah. that seems like something you could do with <laughs> some background, right? Right, exactly. And that was my mentality. So then kind of as it progressed, I just kind of more so accepted where I was. I got more comfortable tapping to people because I mean yeah. I still don't enjoy tapping to people. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> But uh, you realized how necessary it is. <laughs> right. And just the fact like, you know what? I and Mike Coy would always say too of, you know, we're not competing for anything right now. It is just training it's kind of getting to that mental grasp of, you know what? That's all right. I am having fun. It's, sure. I'm not fighting for anything. When you realize you didn't need to win every round. Right, yeah. exactly. And that was easier against some people than others, but slowly it all just kind of morphed and it's like, you know what, it is mm-hmm. what it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's like, I still feel like I need to win every round. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't get um, berated every morning class for rolling too hard. <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> well, no, I'm not saying I do, uh, okay. <laughs> but Mike and I consciously, every time we roll in the mornings, remind people mm. that we're all going to work and this is the beginning of the day. And we need to like chill and have nice rolls with each other. Mm-hmm. We said 6 a.m. class, every time we start rolling, bring it up, even though everybody's heard it a thousand times. But it's one of those things where, you. you know, subconsciously you can be like, oh, we just drilled this arm bar and I really want to get this arm bar in class today or something. <clears throat> but if you hear that before you start rolling, then you're going to say, okay, maybe I don't have to go as hard as possible for this arm bar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it helps because then it, keeps people coming back to the morning class because if if you if morning class is too rough we've seen that in the past where attendance has dwindled when um, people get 
crazy in the morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. the morning sense. class is booming right now. Yeah, there's 12 people uh, last two Thursdays, I think, at yeah. 6 a.m. That's wild. Which is fantastic. Do you go to 6 a.m.? <laughs> I do. That's yes. yes, he does. training, I do. You're crazy. All of you are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the best way to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm working from home on Tuesday, so maybe I'll go. Yes. We're doing more nogi leg locks. Mm, that's right. Or leg positions. <laughs> cool. You've been playing with leg locks a little bit recently. Yeah, that, bit. that's what you call it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could tell. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That uh, Leg locks are really, to me, what really make me feel like, oh, jujitsu that I have no clue. It's mm. like everything else you did, again, with the grappling background, it's like, Fairly familiar. Yep. Leg locks, not at all. So I just feel yep. like, ah, yes. Yeah. Truly that feeling of, I don't know what I'm doing now. Yeah, and most of the time with leg locks, there's there's no type of, like, leg anything in wrestling. There's, like, leg riding, but it's kind of like a turtle position, yeah, right? Yeah, it's very different. Right. So anything leg locks, you have to be on your back or on your butt for the most part to mm-hmm. finish a leg lock. There are some leg locks from the top, but you fall off to the side when you finish stuff anyways. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that would be super foreign. Yes. Yeah. But I think it's important to start teaching white belts, like, basic leg entanglements and, like, straight ankle locks because it is a white belt move, a straight ankle lock. It is legal in white belt competition, straight ankle locks. How are people going to get there? They're going to get in there with a leg entanglement. And you see white belts that specialize in ankle locks that blow through competition because they just use their one trick. And then later on, they get their blue belt, and they don't know any other jiu-jitsu. So it comes <laughs> right. back to them. But I feel like it's important for white belts to learn what to do with your legs and what happens when people start tangling up legs and what the goals are of the position. Just like you would side control, just like you would a triangle, anything like that. I think it's important. Yeah. Like, legs are just so complicated, though. Like, even yesterday, I was rolling with someone, and granted, he was a black belt, so I had a little bit of advantage, but <laughs> he just kept putting me in a 50-50, mm. and I had really no idea what to do because he's a black belt, and everything I tried, he just stuffed, and so I felt like I just kept getting put in that position over and over, and in my head, I was like, I know nothing. I don't know jujitsu. Why am I doing yeah. this? Well, I would say 50-50 is an advanced leg position, yeah. not a basic one. Okay. So that's like saying S mount. If like you went, you were a white belt and you went to a mount class and they just taught S mount, you'd be like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> right. So yeah. that's how I would translate that position. It's further down the hierarchy of the basic position. Yeah, it was just very complicated, and I was very frustrated. <laughs> it is complicated. And then at the end of the roll, he like slap bumps like, "Good job." He's like, "It was just a fifty fifty." <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. moving on. <laughs> Have you done a leg lock class yet? Um, I don't actually think it's in the beginner curriculum so. either. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you only go to beginner right now? Pretty much. It's the women's Tuesday night and um, Saturday. There have been like a few sporadic ones. Sporadic yeah. ones. And like when I had the Christmas break. I had two weeks off for Christmas. And so then we went a couple evenings and Mm -hmm. that was nice. I know somebody was gonna, we were going at it and he like, (laughs) he had my leg and he was like about to do something, (laughs) something. (laughs) And then he's like, wait, do you know leg locks or knee bars? And I'm like, no. no. And he's like, okay, I'll let it go then. And I'm like, all right. Which is fair, I'm sure. Yes. But there's also the other part where it's like, well, if nobody ever submits me, I'm going to be in trouble. Like, Sure. And that's, You're not going to learn from it? Well, right. And just, and I feel like that's kind of where I am. And even like the white stripe is just feeling like a false sense of security sometimes. Imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm, Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, and even being on the podcast, I was telling Trevor, (laughs) I was like, ah, like, I don't want to do this. (laughs) I think it's important for all listeners of every rank to remember what it's the perspective of a brand new white belt Mm -hmm. so we can help them learn and grow. So I do appreciate you coming on the podcast. Yeah. Because you look at jujitsu very differently than how I would look at it or even how Brent would look at it or how Pedro Sauer would look at it. Yeah, 
And it's a cool perspective, too, because I remember when we had first started talking about doing this podcast 80 episodes ago, and it was because my dad had actually told me, I think I was a two-star boy belt at the time, and he was like, it would be really cool for you to do a blog because you're a female white belt with, mm-hmm. like, a totally different perspective than most people in the sport. So I think it would be good for you. I was like, well, I don't really, like, how do I just talk in front of a camera, like, by yeah. myself? <laughs> so then I got Nick to, like, get on board, and we're like, well, let's make it a podcast instead of just, like, a diary about me. Plus, vlogs are super hard to edit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to do that. It's his job to edit. This thing, so. <laughs> yeah, but, if you do a vlog, you got to record, like, your whole day, then rewatch the footage, and then mm-hmm. put out the best parts of the day. And that's oh, yeah, a full-time job. That. No, thanks. Yeah, yeah. no, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, we started the podcast, and I was a three-stripe white belt when we started it. And if, even if I go back to, like, episode one, you can just see the progression of everything that's changed. And same with him. He was a blue belt when he started, and now he's almost true. a brown belt. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> Got some time. So it's just kind of crazy to see that growth. And you'll probably look back on this episode in five years from now and be like, I know leg locks, like, the back of my hand now. <laughs> and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it is cool to have you here. You too, yeah. though. I mean, you're like, you're a white, God, you're never, you've never really been a white belt. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's had the blue belt mentality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like blue belt. Uh, Those wrestlers, yeah. though, like, we were just saying that I told you that you were a brute. You were the kind of male that I stayed far away from <laughs> yeah. for a good six months before mm. you calmed down. You weren't the only one. <laughs> I, I knew it was happening. I was like, I'm trying, I'm trying. But it's not like, so I don't try to avoid all of them all the time. I just make sure that I have to be on, like, I'm going hard today right. type of role. Like, mm. I won't go with people how you used to be unless I'm, like, I'm going more than 50% today. Right. If mm. I'm, just, like, trying to have a flow day or I'm injured, like, nope. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the way I handle um, no-stripe white belts that I know don't know jujitsu is I focus on what my self-defense jujitsu might look like. So it's more closed guard. It's more angles sweeping to get on top and pinning them and holding them down and you know trying to use my technique against their muscle in a way that would protect me from anything and protect them from what they don't even know what they're doing (laughs) because a lot of no stripe white belts if they roll hard especially with other people that are unexperienced are going to hurt themselves Mm -hmm. so i got to protect myself and help protect them but also give them some cues for them to learn certain things while we're rolling Mm -hmm. that's what i focus on yeah, I've had to learn that for myself, too, because now that I'm more so on the other side of the more spectrum. More experienced. Mm-hmm. Right, and having those rules with no stripe white belts, like, ah, so this is, <laughs> now the rules reverse, <laughs> now I need to defend myself here. Yes, you Make sure I don't it. get smashed, yeah. yeah. Yes. Smash Coming my into face it, out. I felt like Trevor had talked about spazzy white belts, and I was oh, like, okay. I'm not going to be that. I'm going to stay calm. I'm going to stay yeah. calm and then go into work it. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's like every role I have to remind myself, like, this is not a life or death situation. Mm. They're not trying to kill you. But that is bit. really a little bit. I don't know. That is a mentality going in. It's like, okay, if I was on the street and this person attacked me, how will I survive? Yes. And yeah. I guess kind of trying to get out of that mindset and realize Okay, this is training. This is for fun. This is yes. not for kill. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I can have both <clears throat> aspects. The problem, though, is that, like, everyone, when you start jujitsu, if you don't know really anything about mm. jujitsu, is that's really all you have to rely on is your strength. You don't know yeah. technique, which is, I think I just told you very recently, I was like, most white belts don't like flow because flow is mostly about technique yeah. and Putting most white together. belts don't have technique right you only have your strength you only have your defensive system and so when you're rolling with someone that's all you have to rely on and especially being a smaller female you're just like i need to like not be here yeah. and your whole brain just goes into fight or flight mode and so mm-hmm. it's just it's no one's fault be to be like a brute or to be strong or to be just bad because <laughs> everyone's <laughs> yeah. just bad yes and then you just have to learn and teach yourself how to get out of that Yeah, I think it's a habit that kind of erodes away the more you come to class. Mm -hmm. Because then you can start to rely on technique. And I'm sure you've seen that switch. Yeah, and myself and some of the guys who started with me, seeing how we've all kind of come through that full circle. Yeah, yeah, it's super important too, though. It's cool, though, because... 
yeah, even going back to you, you used to be like very strong wrestler, and now you're like now you're weak. Yeah. <laughs> Sam cut his hair. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you're like one of the most fun roles at the gym now because you do just like move so well and like you have mm-hmm. that wrestling background too to be able to like help your body have those better motions than most people. Yeah, good body autonomy. Yeah. There's you can definitely tell when you're rolling with people who have no control of their body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, <laughs> And then you can tell there's people that are beginners that have very good control of their body. They just don't know any jujitsu. Right. And then it's really scary when it's no gi and you have to take a whole wild guess when you're going with them. It's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> what, what rank are you? Yeah, right. That's always yeah. a fun game. <laughs> Especially a no gi open mat where you don't know people. Yeah. Oh, man. The, the what rank are you game? Yeah. <laughs> It's like a murder mystery party. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. That's At the end of the night, time. we will find the white belts. <laughs> <laughs> the black belts blend in the best. Right. Yeah. The white belts show their true yeah. colors. Yeah. I watched this video once of a black belt who went to a no gi open mat and he didn't know anyone and no one knew him and he pretended to be a white belt oh, and he just was That's doing things mean. so I don't even like, think it was no gi. I think he wore a white belt. Was that it? Yeah. yeah. He didn't know. <laughs> and then he was just going out there and he was just destroying everything. And it was like a competition like, class. Oh. <laughs> and oh, all these yeah. people, and it was like a lineup and they would be like in the middle and everybody would be watching them. And he would just destroy these people, almost like King of the Mat. Yeah, style. and everyone was taking it for oh, granted man. because he had a no straight white belt on. And so they were just like, oh, let's slap up. And then the guy would be like, arm bar, leg lock, straight ankle, like everything. And he would, they would just be like, Hi. <laughs> yeah. and they, like the camera was catching them whispering to each other like is he really a white belt like where did yeah. he come from like, yeah. they had no idea it was super funny and then he ended up putting on a black belt at the end of the class and everyone was like oh <laughs> we knew it all along and he was like an IBJJF champion or oh man <laughs> It's a very entertaining video. You should look that up. <laughs> I don't remember who it is or what to look up so I don't either. Fake white belt. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Tell us more about your wrestling, though. Like, how long did you do it for? I did three seasons of wrestling in high school. I did my freshman, sophomore. I got mentally broken as a sophomore rolling with Mm. some of the guys. And it was just like... I I also really enjoyed basketball. I I love sports. It's really as simple as that. I love sports. I Again, my sophomore year... I just, I got beat up by other state wrestlers at that time who were a year older than me. And just mentally, it really broke me because... For the most part, struggling in sports, I never really had that. And then you get to grappling, where it, I would say grappling and just martial arts in general are the most humbling sports, for sure. I agree. And so I got pretty broken. I wanted to play basketball still, so I was like, you know what? This junior year, I'm going to play basketball. Didn't go the way I wanted to there. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, you know what? Wrestling was ultimately what I wanted to do. And the reason I went into wrestling was... Football was really my true first love. Sure. And so the wrestling coach was like, if you want to get better at football, you need to learn takedowns. Like, you know what? That makes sense. So I'm going to yeah. wrestle. So, I heard that's common. Yeah. There's a lot of people that cross between wrestling and football. Yes. Yes. Because it really, it does truly help in tackling. tackling and tackling safety if you know how to actually take someone down safely. Because it goes from yeah, so charging someone. charging at the yeah. knees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so he hooked me on that. I was like, you know what? Yeah, makes sense to me. And um, mm-hmm. just recently, I actually wanted to, coaching has really been on my heart of something I really wanted to do. And so I actually connected with my coach at a wedding in October. And so I got back into wrestling a month ago, started helping oh. coaching back at the high school. That's cool. awesome, man. So, thank yeah. you. It's, Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's really exciting for me. It's a lot. I knew it would be hard. I knew it would be hard getting back into the groove because now it's been eight years removed since I was last wrestling. Yes. And uh, coaching, I can say, is just as humbling as the sport itself. Where it's like, <laughs> oh, man, I really have some wrestling rust to shake off. <laughs> and going to the high school. And, again, the first comment I got from a, a freshman, which Abby liked this. So coach introduc- introduces me and, you know, asks what year I graduated, like 2015. First thing I get, oh, you're so old. Like, uh, all right. Oh, 2015? Yeah. yeah. I graduated in 2009. You're right. 13. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not even that old in the grand scheme of things. But, Dang. Yeah. Perfect. That's how Gen Z sees us. Now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's Man, so I, was, I didn't even graduate in the last decade. <laughs> right? I, I had asked a kid, I was like, oh, so like, what music do you listen to? Like Selena Gomez or something. And he like cocks his head at me and he's like, 
she's kind of old. And I'm like, Selena Gomez? Like, she's still producing music. <laughs> what oh is this? Goodness. She just turned 30, so that's probably old to them, oh, She's I that guess. old? Oh. She just turned 30, yeah. Oh, wow. Her, Demi Lovato, and Miley Cyrus, the three Disney princesses, they all turned 30 this year. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Yeah. Anyways. Sure. <laughs> Does that make you feel old? <laughs> On to a new topic. <laughs> um, I was going to ask, or I was going to say, I appreciated our wrestling round that we had the other, I don't remember when that was, but that was the roles were reversed a bit. Yes. <laughs> Which was super fun. How'd that feel for you? Um, yeah, it was strange. Because <laughs> with that too, so the wrestlers show up, you mentioned, oh, you want to wrestle? You took off your gi, it was no gi. It was like, okay. So we start going, and so I'm I'm not fully sure if this is going to be no-gi jiu-jitsu oh, or no-gi sure. wrestling. So all of a sudden, we go down, and you start a half on me. I'm like, oh, we're actually, we're wrestling wrestling. <laughs> I, I didn't get off my back here. <laughs> yeah. and it's like, but I it was fun. And again, in that instance, too, of going back to stand-up, it's like, wow. It's still, it feels pretty foreign still going back to wrestling, but. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of craziness in wrestling. Yes. Totally different pace. And it was cool being the one time where you were more exhausted than I was in the yeah. world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, wrestling is different. It's a totally different gear for your body to mm. operate in. Yeah. And I think that's the hard part um, with jujitsu practitioners getting into stand-up is whenever you are in stand-up, you have to be at a higher gear in general to complete any stand-up techniques, I would say, for the most part. Yeah, it's more violent for sure. Mm-hmm. And explosive and things like that which is why i really love adding muay thai into my training schedule helps me with my explosiveness and my fast twist muscles <laughs> <laughs> my fast twitch muscles <laughs> but yeah then the jiu-jitsu helps me with my isometric strength with holding and um moving slowly slowly you don't move slow um moving controlled seemingly <laughs> there's a difference between me going wild and moving the shortest amount of distance for me to make you be in a dangerous position. That's what I mean by slowly. Mm. I could move more. I don't need to. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah. How's it been coaching in general? Um, do you find a difference in, I guess I don't know what my question is here. How's coaching going? <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> right to the point of that, it's tough. Um, one of the first times, so we were, they're working stand-up, just takedowns back and forth with the boys, and basically kind of king of mat situation, group of four, winner stays out. Yeah. So I'm going with one of the guys, one of their starters, and we're wrestling. We get into a scramble, and so instinctually, I pulled butterfly in the middle of the scramble. Like, oh my oh. goodness, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> the rest of the like, yeah, I know. It's like, of course, then having wrestling shoes on too, and you have your feet in there. I'm like, oh, re- sorry, bro, <laughs> my bad. Bad habits. Yeah, but um, good it, habits for jujitsu, right? Good and it's for just, yeah, and I remember when Devin was on, he was talking about too of you got to learn and kind of remember of these techniques work in jujitsu. And don't work in wrestling and vice mm-hmm. versa. Mm-hmm. And doing that. So with wrestling and getting back to different controls and different... I mean, because again, the top game is so vastly different in wrestling. No locking hands at all. Right. Just That's the hardest part for me. Yes. It's, <laughs> yeah, especially you if... You lock your hands? No. Nope, that's a point for the yeah, other person. Like... Yeah. What? Yeah. And that's but why... No. I think that's the biggest thing for wrestlers of why their pace is so you much gotta faster. Be like a koala. Did you know yeah. that? I did because he talks about it all okay. the time. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Learn mm-hmm. something new. Yep. And that's why the wrestling pace is just so much. Sure. Because you constantly have to be moving because the second they start standing up, you lose position. Yeah, and yeah. you can't just like hold them down and drag them down. Well, you can, but with different types of grips. So yes. No body locks at all? No. Not when they're down. Is, is, that, is that called anything. Greco or freestyle wrestling? Uh, that one, I believe it's, it's folk style. Folk style, yeah. Folk style is the high school collegiate level. Where you can get grips. Oh, right. no. Uh, the freestyle is the one where you can grip, I believe. I believe there's the three main, the Greco, freestyle, folk style. Okay. But I'm a little out of, a little out of touch with all of them. <laughs> I might be getting those ones mixed up. Okay. But, yeah. You're a real mixed martial artist now. I'm mixing something. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Crazy. Very cool. Have yeah, you ever... I was oh, just going to say, have you... Uh, 
been there when Devin has brought in all of his wrestling buddies? Um, not all of them. They were here this last Friday or mm-hmm. something. Yeah, something when we else. wrestled, they were there. That's yeah, wrestling. Right. Okay. They're quite a bit smaller, though, so I noticed yeah. that. I was like, oh, all right. Not, not guys who probably... He's like 125 know. pounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm 185. So it's like, well, in jiu-jitsu, yeah. you can get away with those weight differences a lot better than you can in wrestling. Wrestling, <laughs> it's very much need the weight classes. I believe that. Because then he brings in that girl that he's really good friends with, too, and she's like 110 pounds. And they all every time I see her wrestling, I'm like, how do you find people in your bracket? That's right. Like, yeah. that's so difficult. Because she's also well, young, too, so you've got to find like a... Like she's in high school now. You huh. gotta find someone in your twenties who's 110 pounds who does wrestling right. at her level. I like, like, yeah, I feel like wrestling is still a lot more common than jujitsu, just because it's in high school. I believe so. But for females, yeah, I don't know for females. I don't know many female wrestlers. It just recently became more mainstream, like literally the last two years for wrestling. Mm-hmm. And I know okay. the, the high school just started a girls program like mm-hmm. a year or two ago. Okay. Well, I know jujitsu has kind of exploded for girls too within the last. Probably years. five years. Like, before five years ago, there was maybe one or two girls in every gym, and now I would say there's probably ten plus. Right, and so. that, was, that was one thing I was thinking of, too, when I was just thinking about things we'd probably touch on. Um, <laughs> it was so taboo when I... Because, again, I graduated 2015. It was so taboo for so there long to be... Ago. Right? <laughs> so taboo so for old. women wrestlers. And, like, it was this big controversial thing, like, am I just going to take a forfeit? Am I actually going to wrestle them? Mm. And now you have... I mean... Jiu-jitsu, you don't even blink if you're rolling with a woman. It's not a problem at all. And now for wrestling, the fact, yeah, we have a wrestling team in the own, my old high school now. And it's just how things have gone so full circle from what was taboo. And now it's like, oh, yeah, we train all the time. We train together. We roll together. Um, mm-hmm. Even in high school, they're practicing together if they need drilling partners. Mm-hmm. So what was taboo and just getting used to rolling with other body types, other people. Mm-hmm. And it's just so vastly changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do women or girls in high school... Do they compete against, is it co-ed or is it only, is it mixed? So. Is it separated? No. I think I've seen some matches where like, you know, maybe 135 pound man and woman are wrestling. Yes. So when I was in high school, there, I, there was like no women's teams. It was just, if they were wrestling, they were just, they were joining the boys sport essentially. Okay. Now, now there are more women teams, girl teams. And so they're able to have matches against their own gender. So just for the sake of strength and whatnot, it's becoming more competitive and growing that way. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, before they wouldn't have had enough people to even have any t- sort of tournaments, anything like that. Right. So it's that's evolved as well. Hmm. I feel like women have been uh, taking over the world for the last few years. Right. <laughs> Ever since Beyonce came out with that song, yeah. I tell you. <laughs> Girls around the world. <laughs> No, it is cool, though, to see how much it's progressed and how much it's grown. Not even just for the female population, but for just everyone. Like, I feel like just more people in general are just kind of gravitating towards wrestling and martial arts and jujitsu and shit. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if you're listening Oopsies. out. <laughs> I'll edit that out a little bit. All right. But, yeah, it's just cool to see how much it's grown. Because I remember even when I started... And I have been training for almost four years now, and there was a girl who didn't train at our gym, but she was a high-level purple belt at the time, and she was just a freaking unicorn. Like, mm. no one mm. in Milwaukee was really at her level, and she actually just got her black belt oh, last week. Oh, we well, you know her. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. We actually went to church with her. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Cool. Very cool. Fun fact. Nice. <laughs> cool. Yeah, she just got her black belt, so congratulations, Joanna. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's but beast. I do remember like her being, I think, like a two- or three-star purple at the gym, and I was like, she's so good. <sighs> like, how do you ever get to that? I don't understand. It was a white belt, and she was just whooped my ass over and over. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. But thanks to her, it's really hard for other people to triangle me, so because they're not the same as hers. <laughs> Yeah, I do. But my dad says the same thing about when he started 21 years ago, is that the way that I feel about purple belt females, which they're more common now, like I would say everyone that I've kind of grown up with in the last four years have also been progressing and getting better in their belts. So there are a lot of female purple belts now in the Milwaukee area, which is super cool. But my dad says that when he was starting and he was a white belt, like even just finding a purple or brown belt male around mm-hmm. was like a unicorn. Like, and no kids? And, yeah. Yeah. Like, if you were a blue yeah. belt, that was really, really good at that mm-hmm. point. And, well, like, now you you're a blue belt, school. like, you're not that good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blue belts used to run schools, um, college clubs. 
and things like that. As a result, do you think that the blue belts were a higher caliber than what they are now? Absolutely not. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, the only reason I say that, <laughs> I didn't mean that as like an attack. <laughs> but back then, um, the resources for learning jujitsu was such a small pool mm-hmm. sure. where you could only learn from other blue belts who would maybe have nowadays a two stripe white belt um, level of technique. Mm-hmm. But nowadays, you can learn from the highest level of jujitsu practitioners on demand in the world for free. Yeah. Or you pay $300 for their complete systematic attacks for right. every position. Right. <laughs> so I'd say the resources today are infinite for jiu-jitsu compared to what they were 20 years ago. And nowadays you see um, people as blue belts winning world championships against other black belts. Just because they have the resources to do so. Mm-hmm. And you can go train anywhere. Mm-hmm. But maybe 20 years ago you would have to drive like four hours to go train somewhere from a blue belt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. So I think it's just very different from then to today. And jujitsu has advanced also in the last 20 years. Yeah. And the rule sets have changed and the culture has changed. Yeah. And he always tells me that they never had any technique back then. I mean, how could you when you're only learning from blue belts who also just basically taught themselves? Right. So there was really no technique at all. And so every time they would spar, it would just be... To the death. Literally. <laughs> like, who's going to win and who's going to be the stronger, bigger, better person? Not because your technique is good, but because you're bigger. <laughs> right. Yep. And that's where only the strong would survive in those types of environments, too. So then you get the... The people that are biggest and strongest that are destroying other people that can't even come back because they're injured Mm -hmm. or destroyed. And then so that kind of, um, you know, comes back to itself and gets worse and worse. Mm -hmm. But nowadays it's much better. (laughs) (laughs) Nowadays it's a hobbyist sport. You can do it. Right. (laughs) It's a hobby. But that's why it's fluid. He's like, he's very adamant on, I want to do this for the rest of my life. So we need to make sure we're good to our training partners. We're not trying to go to the death every single time we roll. Like, if you want to, go find the people who also want to, but you're not allowed to just go and, like, kill the new white belt because you feel like it Mm -hmm. type of thing. But back then, you could go kill the white belt if you felt like it. It was like fresh meat. Yeah. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Not hurt yet. Yeah. But that's why he's so, like, technique-based at Fluid because he wants to make sure that you can roll when you're 95 years old. Like Elio. Yeah. (laughs) So (laughs) Right. So it's kind of crazy. So to answer your question, no. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) Definitely not. Sit down. (laughs) Yeah. So what did you think about Jiu-Jitsu before the first time you stepped on the mat? Like what had Trevor told you that helped you decide, I think I should try it? I guess there were a few different things. And like, your brother, I should say. Yeah. So I have three older brothers. Um, and so I feel like growing up, I was relatively rough and tumble with them. And I enjoy that. I enjoy being relatively physical and active. Um, you feel it when you roll. <laughs> You're strong. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. Um, and so there was that aspect where it's like, oh, I think this is probably something that I would enjoy. And then in addition to that, just kind of like what you were talking about, you know, learning learning a technique and being able to have a skill set that you can continue working on and improving on and having something so that if you are put into a, a position that you don't want to be, that you have some level of, of escape and it's not just flailing. Um, mm-hmm. So that was definitely very appealing to me and... Trevor is not a pushy in your face kind of person, and so he was gently drawing me in and yes. working on me. And... He's dropping seeds and watering them. <laughs> yes, he's good at watering. I'll come back. I'll come back. Water some more. Yeah. And so then in July, Fluid was doing the um, if you train, your spouse can train for free for the mm. month. Yep, yep. And so then I came in a few times, and that was that was really what I needed because as I said, I. I was interested, but I just felt intimidated, and I it felt is. like, I, uh, you know, I don't really know. Um, so that was ultimately what set me over. And... <sighs> Dang <That's okay>. microphone! <laughs> hmm. Don't step in that. <laughs> in my white gi. Oh, uh, um, it'll be all right. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, you were saying that 
<laughs> I lost my train of thought. I, <laughs> I was so distracted by the coffee. <laughs> What's going on? How does this even fall? I don't know. All right. <clears throat> I didn't even touch it. You All did. Right. I did? Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the free trial was kind of the incentive to get over that intimidation barrier. Yeah, and just to kind of get in and... I knew that I would need something to keep me motivated, so I was like, I'm going to sign up for a year. Okay. So, so, yeah, it kept me coming. Sign up for a year? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. I was talking to Brendan, and Trevor walked up, and he was like, I can't believe you did that. And I was like, well, yeah, was I needed no something. No. <laughs> well, it's because I am kind of an all or nothing. Like, I, I need something to ground me and keep me, because otherwise, otherwise I'd be like, meh. We didn't even know if you liked it at that point, because it was so up and down for that trial month. Oh, I was going to like it. (laughs) I made sure. That's awesome. I think that's the the best way to get into it, though. Like That's why we offer the year at a lower price than the month to month, because then it kind of just like locks you in to the point where it's like, well, I paid for this, so now I need to go. And it kind of like motivates you to actually get your butt there. Well, and I knew, too, and I mean... I knew that especially those first classes were going to be the hardest and the ones that I wanted to quit the most. And so I knew that if I even only did it for a month, like that wouldn't really be enough to get me out of that first I want to quit zone. Mm -hmm. Um, But something else that, and I can't remember who said it, but they brought up the point, it was some fabulous athlete. And they were talking about how if you ever want to quit something or you think that you want to quit, or if your kid wants to quit a sport, don't ever let them quit on a bad day. Make mm. sure that they quit on a good day. On a day where, okay, you just won the tournament, and if you still want to quit, fine. But you're not quitting on a bad day. Mm. And I knew that I would have a lot of bad days in the beginning, and so I just felt like, uh, <laughs> a year it is. <laughs> Are you still awesome. having a lot of bad days? I wouldn't say... This month has been pretty good. I'd say in the last month it's been pretty good. There was one... The power of the strike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Well, see, that's the funny thing. So that Saturday I was like, oh, yeah, I can kick butt. And then by the Women's Tuesday night, then it was like, uh... <laughs> so it wasn't a bad day, but it was definitely a Harder. reminder. Like, no, you still don't know what you're doing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you're going to have that for... Probably the rest of your jiu-jitsu career, not going to lie. Which, like, yes. You're going to have good yeah. and bad days, and the good days, you're going to feel on top of the world, and the bad days, you're going to be like, why did I ever get involved in this sport in the first place? Yeah. Yep, never quit on a bad day. No, wait for the good days. See if you still want to quit. I just love that your quote started by a fabulous athlete. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure they were some Olympian. <laughs> Wonder what makes them fab. Yeah, right. <laughs> Winning medals, lots of money, like, fancy never cars. Never used the word fabulous and out of nowhere. Like that was pretty awesome. great. It's my special uh, podcast Flair language that comes out, you know. Mm. So I am genuinely curious, though, Trevor. What did it? What did you say to try to convince her to come? So like, she came to the free month. What seed did you plant? Yeah. Well, let's see. Did you show her all your bruises and your injuries? And be like, this he is talked it. about Nancy. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. I did talk about Nancy. So, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> she's a big tool. Yeah. yeah she she's really a lot worst. of people, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're terrible. You're terrible. <laughs> oh, that's the joke with Nancy. Yeah, she's fantastic. Yep. And, yeah. She came to the one tournament I competed in. Mm-hmm. So, she was there and kind of got that exposure with one scene, jujitsu really presented fully in front of her. Mm-hmm. And then just seeing some of the team members. Obviously, you both were there and that was the one you were coaching at. So she got some exposure. Cause, I mean, was that Fuji last year? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, when Avril and yeah. Garrick <laughs> and Michael, all of them. That was a big tournament day. Yes, yeah. it was. There's another Fuji, February 11th. Here? Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. Milwaukee. Well, maybe that's the one. That's the one. My, <laughs> one of my students is in jiu-jitsu, and I was asking her about how it's going, and she said that she's competing in that. <gasps> Awesome. That's cool. So you have to be there. You should go see yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and then Trevor's going to compete. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> and then we're going to all go to couples night then. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's all that oh, same day. All same oh, my day. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the 11th we got a couple back. people competing. Yeah. Oh, man. I know Bon Tempo and I think Garrick, Garrick, Garrick is, yeah. are both competing that day. And I think a couple others are interested. Uh, I'm somewhat interested. I have to see if anyone's in my bracket. Dude. Mm. <laughs> well, I mean... 
<laughs> if you just if all of you keep on saying, well, let's see, then nobody's gonna sign up. And I know. Yeah. You That's just true. have to put your name in. Hmm. And then if nobody, <laughs> then you can pull your name out. <laughs> yep. But then, Slide into the DMs. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> but okay, so. Sorry. What, what did you tell her? What, where do we get with this? Uh, th- that all just started with the exposure of going to the competition, so, being yeah. around the team, seeing the, the sport. Mm-hmm. Um, her brother, obviously, was a big one. Her cousin, as well, he did jujitsu. Oh, yeah. I don't know how influential he was on you. Not very. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not, it was I mean, a he, while. He stopped doing jujitsu fairly quickly. but So, I mean, she had already, and again, kind of like she said, I already knew that she's a, she's more aggressive than your average girl i would say yep and you feel I, safe at home <laughs> no, no i don't especially it. now <laughs> but um Sorry. i knew she had i knew she would enjoy it i knew it would just kind of being getting over that initial hump that a rough patch i knew she would like it i was yeah. pretty mm-hmm. positive again I and mean, we're the same height obviously we weigh different i'm considerably more in that portion but <laughs> Like body type wise, aggression level wise, I'm like she won't have an issue rolling with. She won't have the same issue a lot of women have of being so much smaller than men, just because she's not that really small frame. So I was like, once she gets over the hump, she'll be able to get in. I yeah, I do remember bringing up Nancy because I mean I got met with just the typical excuses when you're intimidated to start something, which is fair because yeah, it's the. I had that same mentality of why I didn't join earlier, and I knew she was just going through the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, the free trial hit, and uh, we're a sucker for free things. <laughs> she got her hey. out of the door. And, yeah, it shocked me, though, when she said she was signed up for a year with Brenton. Cause walking past, cause that, road, that first month, definitely... Uh, it was rough. It was rough. It was we had rough. a lot of grumpy car rides. Oh, <laughs> Yep. Oh, yeah. oh yeah it'll only get better from here though and i can actually promise you that because literally that's all we talk about this is why we started the podcast right. but like it's just so cool to be able to have that like bonding experience together because not only are you going to the gym together because people always ask us they're like you guys spend so much time together i'm like really we don't right. like we don't drill together we really only get one roll together each so that's like five minutes that we get to roll and we're not sitting there talking and make it out like we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to kill each other and so but it really is just such a cool and humbling bonding experience for a couple to be able to talk about your day talk about what went well and what didn't and i think it's cool because you guys are at different levels in your journey so like you're obviously much more advanced especially when you turn blue like it's gonna have that different He's experience blue levels there. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys will be oh, able to kind of <laughs> But you'll be able to feed off of each other with that. But you guys are roughly a belt away from each other, and we're a belt away from each other, so we've always been able to, like, help each other kind of grow and have a better perspective or mentality on just jujitsu as a whole. Right, Mm -hmm. and I know you've had couples on here before, and and you've alluded to the fact of it can be pretty uh, straining on the relationship at times, drilling together. That's my next question. Yeah. (laughs) But, like, that first month when it was, you know, more tense, getting in, it was, yeah, it was a little rough at at times. But I'd say... I can think of Brenton coming up and being like, all right, you need to go ahead. And I'm like, like this? (laughs) Like that? (laughs) Yeah, just like that. That was was great. (laughs) Like, do you feel it, Trevor? (laughs) Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> but I'd say the last month, month and a half... Now I know why Trevor trains jiu-jitsu. Right? Exactly. <laughs> People get it now. But the last month and a half where we've drilled, it's genuinely been some of the most fun times I've had at the gym where, you know, we're laughing, we're messing around, you know, we're still Aww. doing the techniques. <laughs> He's yeah. tripping but, me. <laughs> yeah, we're just having fun with it. And again, part of why I was so brutish when I first started, taking it too seriously, whereas, you know, now that... Abigail's doing it with me and it is so much more relaxed and it is more fun and I see that more so now and again just the fact we're doing it together and I have yeah. genuinely enjoyed that. Yeah. And it has yeah. been a Aww. lot of fun. We definitely we laugh a lot during the drilling time. <laughs> Sometimes we gotta keep it down. But no, no you don't. <laughs> have okay. you met our gym? <laughs> <Yes>. True. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but how has it been for you being kind of new to the sport and him have been doing it for like a while at this point 
Do you have any issues, like, learning from him? Like, when he tells you stuff, do you like to listen? Or do you just be like, no, shut up, Trevor. You don't know what you're talking about. You're still a white belt. <laughs> um, <I'm... laughs> I would say for the most part, it's fine. Just because um, I realize that I really have no idea what I'm doing. And so at this point, it's like... One of the kids could tell me I was doing something wrong, and I'd be like, okay, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> um, but, no, I would, it definitely would depend on my mood the most. So, like, on mm-hmm. those days that I did feel like, I hate this, <clears throat> I have no idea what I'm doing, this is stupid, flow is dumb. Like, <laughs> on those days when Trevor would try to tell me things, I'd be like, fine, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. But I would say in general when I'm in like a coherent mindset that no, it's fine. I enjoy it. And like I said, I acknowledge that he knows more than I do and mm. I'm willing. I'm willing it to learn like from anybody. Years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that you think that way already. <laughs> that will help you guys. <laughs> but he still doesn't want to listen to me, I guess. I can see it in her face. <laughs> would you say that it's hard for you taking advice from nick when your dad is the black belt do you feel like that's part of what's hard so yeah when i was a white belt absolutely i was like why would i learn from you when my dad's right there like, yeah <laughs> you're a blue belt go away <laughs> i had no interest but as i've matured a little bit <laughs> i have now taken it into the perspective that they have different techniques to show me So, like, now kind of my philosophy on it is I'll ask Nick something that I'm having struggles with or issues with, and he'll tell me what he does and how I could do better with, like, the way that he would coach me. But then I will still also ask my dad because nine times out of ten, they tell me two completely different things. And neither of them are wrong. Neither of them are bad. They're both fantastic pieces of advice. It's just now I've learned two different techniques for the same move, and I can Mm -hmm. see which one works better for me. Mm -hmm. So I would say... In the beginning, yes, I did not want to learn from Nick. But now I really enjoy hearing what he has to say and knowing that he has a lot more experience and that he's almost a brown belt. (laughs) He actually does, like, open up a lot for me on what I can do. But sometimes, I mean, he moves differently than I do. And so does my dad. So they Mm -hmm. both just always have different things to give me, which is nice. Yeah. And that's where we have another friend, Josh Janice at White Lotus. And he's another one that I'll go ask for a third opinion sometimes because then he has a totally different body type and a totally different style. And mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, he'll also give me a completely different answer. And I'm like, this is great. Wow, I'm in good company. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you got a full hand to pick from. Yep. So it's fun. But that's like, like, that's like the essence of jujitsu though is right. like everyone trains and does things differently and they all have different body types and it's just mm-hmm. really cool to be able to learn and grow from each other and i'm really sorry that you can't come to the lab but it's been really fun <laughs> it's okay i'm okay yeah. with that usually i've already been gone from home for about 13 to 14 hours that day so oh. i'm ready to go home <laughs> that's fair Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did just start a class at Fluid on Tuesday nights. We've done two weeks now, so this will be week three. It's called The Lab. It's for, is it three or four stripes and up? Invited white belts. I thought it was like four stripes and up for sure. And then you oh. have to be invited. If... I didn't really pay attention, honestly. <laughs> I know, you I'm tried to kick me the out the first invited. time, I remember. <laughs> I know, he, he came home and like, told Are you me invited? Like, <laughs> yes, I checked. <laughs> But, well, you were invited by Nick, yeah, so. <laughs> Mr. Blue Belt Mindset. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Soon, oh, I yes. soon. But yeah, so it's called the Lab. It's on Tuesday nights, and it kind of just goes to show exactly what we were just talking about—about about how all these different body types and methods come into play, and we all get to feed off of each other of how we do things, which is really fun. So, if you're around, it is open to everyone. It's not just a fluid class. It's an open gym kind of thing. But we just basically pick a topic. And so I know for sure that this week's topic is chokes. So if you guys are interested or have a fun choke that you like to do or want to get better at, come on in. We'll be there. At least us three will. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But if you show up early, I'll be walking out the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you still get a good workout in women's class. Mm-hmm. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I do. I I think part of being able to learn how to like tone down the crazy a little bit. Um, but then also, most of 
I don't know if most is a good word, but a lot of the women are very small. And so mm. it's been a good brain exercise to be like, okay, like learn mm-hmm. technique, keep your weight off of them. We're not mm-hmm. trying to. And so sometimes I feel like, you know, man, I didn't really do a whole lot. Um, but no, in general, I definitely come away very sweaty. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yes. It's yeah. a great workout. Everyone is a little bit smaller, but I mean, that's good because I've always preached about how women just roll differently together. Mm-hmm. Like I have noticed that when I'm rolling with a female, it doesn't matter really what rank they are. They could be a black belt. They could be a brand new white belt. I roll with them different than I would with any male ever. And I, it's, it's so subconscious because I'm not doing it on purpose. It's just what I do. And I'm pretty sure you've said the same thing. Do you? Do you roll differently with women? 100%. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Like, yeah. obviously, you're not going to try to smash Tracy right. into nothing <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just because she's so much smaller than you. Yeah, I'm not sitting on any ladies in Mount. Yeah. <laughs> the way I sit on Bon Tempo. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's that just, control's a lot different. Yeah. Well, it's also, like, hard because when you're trying to, like, reach for things, you're trying not to grab in the wrong spot, too. Like, there's right. been quite yeah. a few times that I'm rolling with a girl, and I'm like, I just totally grabbed your boob, I'm so sorry, and then <laughs> keep going. And I'm like, but like, if a guy did that, that would be very weird. <laughs> so, sucks for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to pull hair is another big thing. Like, mm. yeah. really careful. Yeah. With... Under the head. <laughs> yep. Mm. I've, I've had the same thing where guys grow beards, and I can't loop choke them because I'm just going to pull their beard out of their neck. <laughs> I can see that. It's annoying. <laughs> yeah, and so I know you, they grow it for, for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think it was, I think it's really cool that you started. I think it's really cool that it's going to be there for your relationship and that you guys can keep building off of each other. I know that Abro actually just got his mm-hmm. wife to start yeah, yesterday. I so I'm super stoked about that, too. She texted me and she's like, what kind of geese should I get? And what do I do? And I'm just like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so. It's going to be really fun. I think that'll be good for you, too, because she is going to be pretty new and very you similar to your rank. Know stuff, so you can show her things. <laughs> like, as long as you're things. there to reteach her everything that I have said. <laughs> no, you'll be good. It's good to have like a class that you can kind of grow with, mm-hmm. especially I think it's good for women to have women that they can grow with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like you had mentioned a little earlier in this that the people that you started with have also, like, gotten there. Who did you start with? Um, I was all around the time. Mike and Garrick were all right in that same time. Yep. Um, Those are the two guys who I know were directly right with me. Okay. A bro with the gap or the time off that he took, we've all, we have, he's also kind of been in that same loop. Yeah. So really when I think of, those are the three main guys who I think of that have been progressing with the sure. most and yep and then you got like santino and ben as well so those are both four stripe white belts that i can think about yeah, yeah. i don't yeah. train as much with them just with when yeah, those are yeah. the schedule but yep no, noon and night people you just married <laughs> yeah and that's kind of the crazy part about fluid is we have like different people who train at different times so like i never see the 6 a.m people right. which is why i want to go every once in a while just to go say hi like that's I, why used I go to, to every class <laughs> <laughs> just to say oh, hi <laughs> i used to go to 6 a.m before i got the job that i'm at now because i had a little bit more time to get there and i mm. wouldn't go often but i would make yeah. it a point to go just to go see ted i was gonna <laughs> say used to like what once every six months yeah <laughs> right i feel like i've seen you twice at 6 a.m since i started <laughs> Well, now I can't. I physically can't get there because mm. I work far away. So I have to drive at that point. But uh, yeah, I really like going to different classes to see different people, which is why it's cool that we're starting to do those different chats as well. So you can start talking oh, to yeah. like your group that you're going with because I never see the noon people either. Like there's people that I'm like, do they still train here? And he's like, yeah, they come to noon every week. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> They're going to get promoted soon. What? <laughs> I feel like that's kind of a cool thing for the lab class because mm-hmm. I remember being there and obviously there are some people who are from different gyms but it was like people coming out of the woodwork where obviously I'm fairly new but seeing these people it's like I've never seen like any of these people before mm-hmm. and they come out for that class mm-hmm. so that's pretty cool mm-hmm. it's yeah. super cool it's a good community mm-hmm. I enjoy it so last thoughts on jujitsu um do you feel better that you've started jujitsu? 
Start with Abby. <laughs> Can you rephrase that? Yeah, let me Come rephrase again. that. Um, how do you feel since you started jujitsu? Do you feel like it's added to your life? Or do you feel like, um, I guess, it's a terrible question, so... Yes. <laughs> yes. No, sorry. I wasn't how, saying how yes has, to your question was how terrible. How has jiu-jitsu saying... added to your life? <laughs> uh, I definitely, I think that it helps with discipline and being able to have something scheduled outside. And um, I am a high school PE and fitness mm. teacher. And so I, I genuinely stay very active with my students. And I'll usually be leading th- them through different workouts through the day. Mm. And so it's nice having my own thing that I can go to without my yes. students and being able to improve in that. And so it's an outlet. It's also, it feels very satisfying being able to um, invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm investing in what I kind of feel like is safety in some ways. I'm investing mm-hmm. in strength. I'm investing in my health. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, on Saturdays, it's something that we can do together. And it's fun. It's fun being a part of your spouse's world. And I really like being able to have more of that where our worlds kind of intermix. And so overall, I would say that, yes, it's definitely added added to my life <laughs> i enjoy it it's Very probably cool. cool for you too just because you are a teacher and now instead of, you get to go teach all day but then you also now get to be the student in something completely foreign to you and you know what going off of that and trevor is really the one who had said it to me because i'm commenting i'm like mom this is stupid i don't like this and he's uh-huh. like isn't that what your students tell you when you're trying to teach them new moves and i'm like yeah but that's different and <laughs> So it was very humbling and kind of like, it was a really good teaching moment to realize, you know, this is how my students feel and this is the same frustration that they have. And so being able to be more gracious with them and understand Mm. like, okay, this, this is uncomfortable for you and this is frustrating and it's Mm -hmm. not stupid. You're, you know, frustrated because you don't know how to do it. And then also being able to say to myself, this isn't stupid. Flow is not stupid. <laughs> it just is difficult for me and I'm learning. Mm, there's so, a difference. Yes. So it's been good, good learning. And as I said, I don't always take it very well, but Trevor is a gentle teacher. And so he'll help me remind me. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> All right. Your turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, my question was awful, but how has jujitsu helped your life? That's a better question. Well, the two, <laughs> yeah, the two immediate ways that were more so when I started. Um, well, physically, I mean, I started and within probably six months. So by the time I competed, I'd lost 20 pounds and I competed mm. about, it was right about six months after starting. Yeah, yeah. So physically there was that. Um, honestly, I'd say mental health was honestly a big part of where I feel like jujitsu helped me a ton because I remember because after being in sports my whole life always competing and just going to work coming home going to work coming home working out every day but working out versus sport yeah just I don't enjoy working out the same way at all so agreed yeah and so I just remember feeling so burnt out and almost just like restless all the time and then jujitsu just having that outlet of you know, it's fun. I'm laughing, which at work, I'm definitely not laughing most (laughs) of the time. So it really just was kind of a calming factor in my life, I would say. Uh, And it was definitely noticeable too. Yeah, I bet. I bet I was a lot (laughs) just more comfortable in my day-to-day life. But yeah, now with Abby doing it, it is, it's got a a new special element to it. Before, when I would talk about the gym, I had to give everything nicknames, and now we can talk about it and do it together. I know know most of the people at the gym (laughs) by their nickname. (laughs) Love (laughs) it. like, oh, is that... (laughs) (laughs) They're not all bad nicknames. They're nice nicknames, but... (laughs) I bet we have nicknames. (laughs) You were... You were... um, You were... Oh, you're spoiling. No, Uh, you've messed up. That was the wrong one. (laughs) <laughs> oh, okay i guess we have to have a have <laughs> blue belt nick's probably purple belt nick no yeah. yeah blue belt nick was yeah i think that was big nick big nick right yeah, yeah. no because he was big nick there was a lot of there, nick. Yeah, and then there was my return nick. oh my goodness oh, oh maybe fun it was nick, nick nick and nick yeah. so there i had to decipher 
Well, at one point, we yes. had, like, six different Nicks who came yeah. regularly, and we had to, like, come up with oh. a different way to do it all the time. Yeah, and there's also Nick at... Never mind. Um, <laughs> 6 a.m. Okay, 6 a. I remember Nick. all the Nicks. That's a different Nick. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which he okay. was actually... <laughs> Anyways. He was big I'm Nick for a while, because he's large. <laughs> like, tall. <laughs> But should we ask you the exact same question then? <laughs> yes. What? How has jujitsu impacted your life? Oh, I quit my job and only do jujitsu now. I love it. Basically. <laughs> uh, it's changed everything in my life, really. Mm-hmm. I've, I've been, uh, my physical health has been, has skyrocketed. Um, my, every, I enjoy like almost every moment of life now because of jujitsu. Dealing with stress has been, uh, extremely easy after jujitsu because I learned to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations and figure out what technique and, and tools do I have at my disposal to alleviate this stress or what can I actually control about this stress. Mm-hmm. Same way in jujitsu, you get put in a position and you're like, okay, this sucks. Uh, first, accept that it sucks. Secondly, what tools and techniques do I have to get out of this position and what can I do about it versus what are they trying to impose on me that I can't control? So that analogy has helped my life tremendously. And I'd say that's probably like the biggest thing to take away yeah. from jujitsu. You've always been a calm person, but I feel like jujitsu has calmed you even more. Yes. <laughs> if you guys think I'm calm. <laughs> <laughs> you can only imagine. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, even, I won't get into the details or anything, but Nick and I were put in a pretty bad situation a couple months ago and it was kind of a think fast situation where he was able to really quick and witty, just like think on his feet. And we were out of danger very, very quickly because of that. And we said that jujitsu was probably the biggest reason that we made it out alive on that day. So yeah, I was like, Oh, that's not good. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Let's not do this. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) You need to escape. It was crazy. (laughs) (laughs) But jujitsu really helped out a lot. In that scenario, and a lot of other scenarios too, but mm-hmm. it's been good. Yeah, so. super good. Mm-hmm. All right, your turn. It's I guess your turn, Brittany. Oh, I didn't go. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that it has impacted my life mostly with the mental aspect of it. I mean, on top of staying in shape, because I was twenty pounds heavier than I am now before I started jujitsu, and that was with me going and lifting three times a week. And I had a lot of muscle on me, which I still do, but, like, I've leaned a lot, which is really nice. And so I still enjoy lifting, but I would so much rather be rolling than lifting. So the physical has been really, really great for me. But then the mental has been probably the biggest thing that I've had, that I've overcome. I had a lot of anger, and I was just a very, like, emotional and kind of dramatic person, especially, like, in high school with a lot of stuff happening and I never really had a good outlet or a good way to get through that. And so I remember when I met him, like I was like very much the negative Nelly of the relationship. He was always the happy go lucky one. He always had to like bring me up, keep me from crying like that kind of thing. And now I would say I've like very much evened out to his playing field where I'm much more relaxed and everything. If something happens, I don't sweat it anymore. I'm just like, Oh yeah, that happened. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of figure out how to get through it rather than stressing out about what could happen that will probably never even happen. How to escape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's so, word? I would say that my stress levels have <clears throat> went dramatically down since I've started jujitsu because I've just learned how to interpret life better because of it. Mm. Yeah. Profound. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Love it. So, very cool. Cool. Well, yeah. I appreciate you guys being on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Super fun to talk about jujitsu and our lives as married practitioners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's lots of stuff coming up. So, wow, it's been so long since we've done an episode. <laughs> but there's, yeah. there's a lot coming up. So we have the Fuji tournament February 11th, which it sounds like some people are interested in doing from Fluid. So come out and support if you are at our gym. we got and a Peoria seminar next weekend. Peoria seminar next weekend. At Fernandali. Weekend. Yep. Jiu-jitsu. Just like three hours away from us in Milwaukee. It's in Illinois. Mm-hmm. And then we've got uh, Felipe Barbosa coming to Fluid yes. on February 4th. Yes. And then we're also going to be at the Gentle Art Lifestyle Winter Camp 2023 at White Lotus. Mm-hmm. Um, fire on the beach going into Lake Michigan mm-hmm. after training. And um, world-class jiu-jitsu for 
four days, I think. It's basically a mini Globetrotters camp, but here in Milwaukee under Josh Janus and Megan Wagner, which is super cool. So they have that and... And Pans in March. Pans in March. I just got to sign up, but I'm pretty sure I'm going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We also just signed up for our first Globetrotters camp this summer, actually. Oh, Estonia. Cool. So we're going to Estonia in Europe. Oh, Parnu, wow. not Tallinn. Yep. <laughs> that's awesome yeah that's what you did too it takes over your life good luck <laughs> <laughs> for us we kind of dived in head first yeah <laughs> as i said but. any last minute thoughts anything we didn't get to that you wanted to it was like an aa meeting it was great <laughs> <laughs> was it as bad as you thought it was gonna be i know you had mentioned you were nervous i was nervous but it was good the coffee it eased my nerves mm-hmm. you know? that's the plan <laughs> yeah <laughs> You guys are very, very welcoming, so it's good. <laughs> I, awesome. I get to cross off one of my jujitsu goals, because this was actually one of my goals when I started training at Fluid, was like, yes. all right, I got to get invited on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got to get, I got him to get him to feel comfortable Aww. enough with me. I'll know, like, okay, I've integrated at least somewhat. Yes, yeah, so, absolutely. Thank you for Love helping it. me accomplish that goal. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. So, awesome. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Yeah. And, yeah. We won't That's wait it. next so long next time, so I guess. <laughs> <laughs>